What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, special guest for Black History Month for inter- interviewing all our internal employees. So, Chair, let the world know who you are and what you do. All right, my name is uh, Chair Bellano. Um, a PE teacher, as well as the co-founder of Awareness 617. Um, I also work at Finish Line for the store 816. And um, yeah, located in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Cool, so take us through, I know you're really heavily invested into the, you know, the mental health of, you know, black and brown people. And take us through how you got into that. So basically, me and a buddy of mine, we always have been interested in like, you know, the mental health field and, you know, my dad being a psychologist. So we, I, I really know like the background, but, you know, just growing up, you know, in the urban community, you know, just like focusing on, you know, things that like, you know, from the street gangs and things like that, you know, mental health has never been like taken seriously, you know, just growing up, you could, you know, the stigma, you know, like um, me coming from like a Catholic, you know, background, you know, when people just growing up, people struggling from, you know, anxiety, depression, certain things like that. You know, I grew up on, you know, let's let's go pray, pray on it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's go like, uh, you know, it was never like, let's go talk to anybody. You know what I mean? Because in the black community, I feel like people are just, you know, <clears throat> they feel like they'll be made fun of, you know, by seeing right. a therapist. So basically, I'm trying to let, you know, everybody know that it's okay to, you know, it's okay to have Jesus and a therapist too. Cool. So take us through some of the steps people could take to help, you know, cope with their own mental health and how they could help, you know, find just like positivity in life so they're not feeling so down or depressed during the day. First step I'd probably say is um, to talk to somebody. That's the very most important thing, you know, from talk to a professional at that, you know, it's easy enough to say, I'm talking to my friend or like, you should talk to somebody that doesn't know anything about you, you know, therefore you won't get anybody to judge you. <clears throat> Another thing would be, you know, physical activity. You know, um, we also have youth programs for the youth who, you know, struggle with mental illness. We have a mindfulness um, like session that they can do, which is good for all ages, mindfulness or like, meditate daily I meditate probably like five six times a day just to help me cope through you know my um anxiety or depression and things like that and then what are some resources people feel like you know research or look up to help uh whether it's finding like you know therapists or even just someone to talk to um hey google is a you know number one friend you could just um you know google therapists in my area for me like somebody from the urban community could also you know look up black therapists and you could you know see multiple people and you can check what you know their specialties are if it's like like uh childhood trauma or like domestic abuse or drug abuse like it gives you all the proper like documents and things like that so with that being said you know mental health is just such a big thing especially today seeing like you know, even data from last year between like different protests and things of that nature. So, you know, the work that you're doing is very appreciated and super important as well to help people, you know, just understand that there's someone there for them to talk to and things will be better. So kudos to you, Chip, on the work you've been doing. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, I mean, that's all I have for you, unless you have the floor for the closing uh, remarks. You want to shout out your store, your team and all that? Yeah, I want to shout out my team, 816, uh, <laughs> yeah, Massachusetts, as well as the school that I actually work at, Codman Academy, mm-hmm. okay, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. You know, I love all those kids, love working with all those kids, all the staff and everything, and just getting ready for Black History Month, yeah. you know, because <clears throat> at the end of the day, Black History Month is a time for, like, you know, rejoicing, celebrating and thanking those African-Americans for, you know, giving us hope and life lessons <clears throat> that can be used, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's not just all about the bad times that we've all we've been through, you know, as okay. people in the urban community, Black people. It's about the integrity, leadership, and determination. So I just want everybody, all the kids, just to know that. For sure. And education, too, help, you know, people take the time to just inform themselves of, like, from MLK to like Marcus Garvey and the work they've done to get to where we are right now. So. Yeah, we just we just hope that we can just emulate all that, you know, 
into you know the elementary system, all the school systems, whether it's white, black, brown, because you know a lot of us African Americans have built this country, so we don't want people to forget that. Yeah, and that's what all it really takes, you know, just integrating that kind of information to like curriculums at an early age, so people just understand, you know, we're all in this together. So yeah, and social social justice, social injustice is is very important too. So you know, just keeping that afloat. You know, we don't want a history to wipe away. We want our kids' kids to know about MLK, you know what I mean? So and how we got here. So. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. Again, thank you, Chip, for the work you've been doing and taking the time out to talk with me today for uh, Community Voices. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Cool. Take care. Yeah.